So we just received the very sad news that the 21 year old rapper Juice World has passed away after having a seizure in an airport. And there's a lot of talk about substance abuse and everything like that. And as a recovering drug addict who's been clean for seven years, I wanna talk some, about some things that might save your life or the life of someone you know. What's up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, the things that I'm really passionate about are mental health, psychology, drug addiction, and really trying to give people hope that change is possible. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I'm also over on Instagram and Twitter if you wanna follow me at The Rewired Soul, all right? So let's jump into this. Um, those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm a recovering drug addict. I got clean on my 27th birthday, June 23rd, 2012. My drug of choice was prescription opioids. So I talk quite a bit about um, the prescription drug epidemic and we're gonna be talking about Xanax quite a bit in this because Juice World, a couple of his substance of choices were codeine, which is a prescription opioid, as well as Xanax, which is a benzodiazepine, which is usually used to treat anxiety, but it's also abused a lot, especially in um, the rap community. All right, but aside from that, I also worked at a drug and alcohol treatment center for a little over three years. We did everything from detox to inpatient to outpatient, as well as aftercare. So when I saw this news about Juice World this morning, it's it's already sad enough to see you know a young a young person die, especially one who's just hitting their stride and about to you know just be set for the rest of their life. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, so when this happened, whenever I hear of a young person passing away, my mind immediately goes to substance abuse, and this is because I have seen so many people die from substance abuse, okay? So as of right now, what we know is that Juice World had a seizure in the Chicago airport. When they took him to the hospital, he later died at the hospital as a result of that seizure. So it is not clear what caused that seizure yet, but things are leaning towards substance abuse. All right, so as I was researching for this video to see Juice World's history, if he had any substance abuse problems. There are plenty of interviews of him talking about trying to get off codeine because he really, um, you know, had his girlfriend scared. He also talks about his issues with Xanax and everything like that. So, uh, like I said, a lot of the evidence right now is leaning towards substance abuse. We're not gonna know for sure until the toxicology report comes out, but I'm gonna come back to that in just a little bit because even the toxicology report might not tell us if it was a substance abuse issue. And I'll explain why a little bit later, all right? So the first thing I wanna dive into is, why is it so hard for people to quit using drugs, to quit drinking, whatever their addiction is, all right? So specifically, when we're looking at Juice World. All right, and we've seen this happen to other people like uh, another rapper, Macklemore, who's been off and on with his sobriety, right? Uh, we had Lil Peep die just a few years ago from his substance abuse. Why is it so difficult for people to quit? And a lot of it has to do with their environment and their identity, okay? And this isn't just rappers, all right? I want everybody to realize this. Like I said, whether you're somebody struggling with substance abuse issues or if you have a family member or a loved one who is, some of you who are in recovery, like feel free to share your experience down in the comments below. But one of the biggest issues with substance abuse is that we're afraid to get rid of it because it is woven into our identity, right? So when you look at somebody like Juice World or other people in the music industry, it's difficult to quit because if you quit, right? If you quit, that also means that you are also leaving different friends, right? Different people that you hung out with because part of your friendship might have been based on using substances. And this is part of my experience. 
One of the things that kept me in my addiction for almost a decade was my identity was wrapped up in it. If I quit drinking, if I quit using, if I quit partying, all these things, like who am I? Right? I'm no longer the guy who's going out to the bar and snorting lines of coke in the bathroom. You know what I mean? I'm no longer the guy who's, you know, uh, taking these pills and also hooking other people up with pills and everything like that. So there are a million different reasons why addiction is so difficult to overcome, but one of them is because of our environment and being afraid of losing that. So it's not just losing the substance, right? And why do people use substances? A lot of times it's to mask some kind of pain, all right? The three primary reasons that people abuse alcohol or drugs is to get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape, right? And that's one of the reasons why I try to talk about different coping strategies on my channels because I had to learn how to live with life on life's terms without abusing substances. You know what I mean? For a lot of people, like I'd imagine, you know, Juice World and a lot of other young people, like it might start out as just being the cool thing to do, like, yo, let's, let's you know, use together or let's get messed up, you know, whatever it is. Like it might start like that, but with the way our brain works, when we start getting these negative emotions, right? Anger, sadness, anxiety, you know, all these different things. Like our brain says, well, you know, those drugs made you feel pretty good, why don't you use it for that? And what happens is, is our brain starts associating those bad feelings with getting messed up. So pretty soon, we're not just drinking and using to party, we're doing it to cope with life. And that is one of the main reasons why, you know, we need therapy. We need, sometimes we need uh, antidepressant medications, right? And I'm gonna talk about non-narcotic anti-anxiety medications in a second. We need support groups, you know, whatever it is, right? There's so many things that I have to do for my mental health on a daily basis so I don't go back to those substances, okay? So now let's talk about seizures and substance abuse. So here's the thing, like, no matter what, when you are trying to get off a substance, get medical help. The best thing you can do is to go to a detox facility, okay? Two substances that can kill you from withdrawal are Xanax and alcohol, all right? When you're withdrawing from Xanax and alcohol, there is a likelihood of seizures, all right? So when looking at Juice World, looking at his struggles with substance abuse issues, when I see someone died of a seizure, right, who had no prior medical history of seizures, it seems like this was a result of withdrawal. So with Juice World traveling, it is possible that he ran out of the drugs and this was part of withdrawal, okay? So that's why I was talking about earlier, like, as you pay attention to this story and watch this story and when toxicology reports come out, you might not find out that he had Xanax in his system because you can die from seizures from withdrawing from Xanax, which would mean that the drugs weren't in the system. And Xanax withdrawal can cause seizures for a long time after you quit. After you stop using the substance, it can happen for weeks after. Like, personally working in the drug and alcohol treatment center, I saw people who came in and got, um, you know, clean off Xanax, and thank God they were in our treatment center where we had nurses 24 seven and doctors and everything like that. I saw people who had like a seizure a week for the first month. I remember one kid who came in there um, getting off Xanax, he was sober for about a month, month and a half, and I'm just sitting there doing a group, right? I'm sitting there doing my normal group, and for some reason, right at that moment, I caught glances with this kid, and he just turned stiff as a board and fell out of his chair and started having a seizure because the withdrawal from Xanax can happen for a while after. We always have to remember, these are mind altering substances, okay? Seizures are a result of what's happening in the brain and something not working right, some misfires and everything like that. So that's how these substances can lead to having a seizure later on, okay? So I just wanna end with this. 
when people are young, especially when they're successful, like we get this idea that we're invincible. You know what I mean? We see so many people around us drinking or using or whatever, we think that this can't happen to us. Um, I've seen way too many people pass away. Most of the people I've seen pass away from substance abuse issues were probably, I think the majority would were between 18 and 26 years old. Like, and that's so sad, man. That's so sad. I've had friends 24, 25 years old who have passed away from this thing. So I know Juice World had a lot of fans out there and my suggestion is if you wanna honor his memory, like try to help people, get help for yourself, whatever it is. Like I'm living proof as well as millions of other people that you can have a substance abuse problem and kick it to the curb. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at therewiredsoul.com or the merch that we got like this shirt with our adorable cat, Wyatt. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.